one of the things God does, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. When we're going through a crisis, one of the things that can drive us up the wall is the silence of God. I mean, if we were honest, we would say, Lord, that gets on my nerves when you don't talk to me. I'm asking you something and you're not saying anything. You know, if you're holding a conversation with someone, you expect some feedback. Correct? Well, one of our YouTubers, they asked this. Well, what's up with the silence of God? When you need answers, God's not talking. He's not giving up any. I mean, if you wanted to seek God, you couldn't find him if you paid a tracker to do so. There are times God speaks. He speaks so much. He says so much in his silence. There are points to be driven home through God's silence. Do you hear me? There are revelations to be caught through God's silence. Now, if you walk up to me, I'm going to give you some examples. If you walk up to me and we're going out shopping, let's say we're shopping at a, at a clothing store. You come out of the, uh, the dressing room and you say, okay, how do you think this looks on me? And I look at you like this. I'm not saying a word. But you know what I said, don't you? Mm -hmm. And if you were to try to put words to what my face said to you, what my silence relayed, it would be, if you don't take that crap off, you look like an idiot. I know you don't expect me to answer that question now, do you? Because you won't like the answer. There are answers, tons of answers, tons of revelation in silent moments. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, should I marry this man? Oh, he's so cute. Oh, love the way he dresses. I love the way he carries himself. I love his whole persona. Oh, he's got it so together financially, Lord. What do you think? Do you think this would be a good thing for me to do? Well, Lord, you know, he goes to church. Um, he says he believes in you. And, it, you know, we've even prayed together a few times. And uh, I introduced him to my pastor. And my family likes him. And what do you think, Lord? If God ain't talking, you better not do anything. Because if you don't get what he's saying, you better wait until you do. Now, there are times when you get in a situation and you are kind of lost for words. Do you know God is never lost for words like you and I are? No. No. But he refrains from talking because he's trying to get you to dig deeper and deeper and look harder and harder. Have you ever looked at a puzzle and you're trying to figure out which way is out? Have you ever tried to figure out what the dots mean when they're connected. What word? Where is the word that says so and so? Or is there a hidden message in the image? Well, you can't sit there and, oh yeah, we had coffee. No, you need silence to get these revelations. 
You need to look at it long and hard, baby. Some answers God wants you to deduce for yourself with the brain and the sense he gave you, with your knowledge of his word and his will. He wants you to do the math. And if you refuse to do the math, it's because you refuse to know his answer because you don't want to hear it. But if you dig and you dig and you dig, trust me, seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door shall open. Now, the literal meaning of that is seek and keep on seeking. Ask, keep on asking. Knock, keep on knocking. Keep on knocking. Keep on knocking. It's in your importunity. There are times when you don't have enough importunity. Are you looking at me like, what? What the heck kind of word is that? You argue with Jesus. He's the one that said it. Importunity is just another word for persistence. Some of us have to have muscles built in us. And some of us have been too passive for too many years. And God says, if you want it, baby, you have to go after it. <sighs> Which means you have to knock and keep on knocking. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm standing here. Excuse me. Some of you won't even get any attention unless you do that. Because in that frustration, aggravation, and determination... God is building up your muscles to don't take no for an answer. You want it, you will get it. But you have to knock and keep on knocking. Don't come to me and ask me. Do what I told you to do. Knock. You see them on the other side of that door, you knock till they get tired and come. Some answers you won't get. Some solutions will not come. Because most of us give up the first no and we're, we turn tail and run. Okay. No, it's not okay. No, that's not acceptable. I need this. My daughter needs this medication. I need to get this type of coverage. I need to have my price lowered. We need to work out a deal. Well, if you say no, you've done your job. Now let me speak to your supervisor. And you speak to your supervisor, supervisor. And you push and you knock and you ask and you push and you seek and you dig and you knock. There are times when that is building up something in your character. While you're asking God for something, God's saying, I've already put in you what you need to get it. Use it. I'm not going to open the door for you. All you have to do is reach your hand out and turn the knob. Walk in. Who are you afraid of? Them or me? So there are times when God is building up a fire in you that has never been there. And it can't be built up without resistance. The nose. And the door slamming in your face. And the rudeness. And the nose. And the <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But you stand there. And when they look at you. Well, what are you doing here? You're still here? I haven't gotten what I want yet. Yes. I'm still here. Now do I get to speak. To this person I need to speak to. Or do I just allow myself to walk in. On my own. Uninvited. You're not being rude. You're not being mean. You are operating in importunity. Perseverance. Mm -hmm. You need a job. You filled out the application. You're waiting. And you're waiting. And you're, Is my phone charged up? Yes. Yeah, charged up. Well, why aren't they calling? 
You know the number. You pick up the phone yourself. Hi, uh, may I please speak to? Yes, I'm calling about that position. Next day? Yes, my name is so and so. I'm calling about that position. Next day? Yes, my name is so and so. Oh, yes, uh, I would like to speak too. And you don't stop until they have to force, they're forced to give you an answer, yay or nay. And even if they tell you nay, you want that thing bad enough, you get your little paperwork together, and you march your little happy hips down, and you pray all the way. Now, Lord, if you want me to have the job, I'll kick and kick and I'll blow and blow till I blow this door down. But if you don't want me to have the job, here's where you get God's direction. Slam the door on my face and never open it if this is not a good thing for me. Period. But you pursue until you get a peace about the no. If the no gives you a peace, leave it alone. There are so many ways to seek God's face. You seek him through his word. Is this for me, Lord? Sometimes he's not going to, yeah, yeah, no. He wants you to seek him through his word. There are times he wants you to sit and wait on him. If he tells you, I've got this, and six months later, this hasn't happened, but he told you, I got this, you stay out of it and keep your hands off of it and watch it unfold before your very eyes by the hand of God who already told you, I've got this. See, we have to decide who do we trust. Are we going to work this thing? Does God want us to do it? Work it, work it, or does God want hands off? Does he want you to stay a step aside? The battle is the Lord's. This battle is the Lord's. You're not going to fight this one. I am. And I don't lose with the stuff I use. See, God's got you coming and going. So even if you're not sure if you're hearing from him, if you're not clear, ask God to give you undeniable signs while you're binding Satan and his lies in the name of Jesus. Okay. I hope that says something. I hope that helps you understand God does speak. And he also uses silence as his answer. God bless you.